Hello, welcome to Harrison How To. Today we are discussing Seven Days to Die, The Forge. Uh, Forge is going to be one of your key ingredients. It's going to be one of my longer episodes, so I'm going to try to break this up into chunks. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to figure out how to get the recipe um, to make the forge. The recipe can be found and can be learned uh, in that way, or you can come over to the intellect tree and under craftsmanship perks, you have a page here. You go to advanced engineering blacksmith you can see right there you are now a blacksmith and able to forge iron and other often uh, objects craft forges and craft items with them 20 percent faster um, so if you use the book to learn a forge you will not get that 20 percent faster um, and crafting glue cheaper that just gives you the ability to craft the forge um, as you can see i don't have that um, learned but you can go down here i go to my forge schematic pull it out Boom, now I learned it. You will go to craft, forge, and here's the ingredients you're gonna need in order to craft it. You're gonna need clay, small stone, iron pipe, leather, and duct tape. I have a video for how to make duct tape. I think it's pretty straightforward and pretty um, easy to find. You can go scavenging. The two that I find that people are struggle with early on is leather and the short iron pipe. Uh, leather can be found from killing and skinning animals, but the one that people seem to forget about is leather furniture. So when you're clearing a house, if you hit one of these, you can see I'm getting leather down there in the bottom right hand corner. Um, you don't need very many pieces of leather in order to craft a forge. You only need 10. So having that, um, Having that ability to get those first 10 pieces of leather simply by hacking up a couch in a house that you find is going to be a lot faster than trying to kill an animal uh, early on in the game. Uh, short iron pipes, another one typically difficult to find. Check plumbing in houses, like under sinks, um, toilets, those kind of things. If you manage to get yourself a wrench, because I often find wrenches underneath sinks, um, pretty much anything that you take apart in a house by using right click while it's equipped is going to give you a short iron pipe, like the sink, the toilets... Uh, the microwave, the fridge, any of these kind of metal objects in the house. Sometimes they even have like flat pipes up against the wall. Um, that's going to give you a short iron pipe. Once you have your short iron pipe and all, or all your ingredients, craft it. Uh, you can craft it at a workbench. It does take a little bit of time to craft. I already have one, so we're going to go ahead and place it. Okay, you've learned your recipe. you found your ingredients and crafted your forge. Uh, now we're going to figure out how to use our forge. Uh, first and foremost, you're always going to need a fuel type that can go in here. Uh, wood is a perfect one. I don't like to use coal because I think wood is more plentiful and coal I can use for gunpowder. <coughs> but there's a lot of different things you can see. This is your fuel timer. This is how much time you have left until you run out of fuel. Um, but you can see, like, I can use other things. My stone spear, maybe I got something left over, like, oh, I don't want this fire axe anymore. That gives me four minutes of fuel. Again, I'm going to use wood. Now, once we get it turned on, we put whatever we want smelted into the forge here. Whatever we're going to craft and it's going to bring out of the forge will go here. So, for example, I'm going to put in... Oh, look at this. I got way too many short iron pipes. I'm going to stick those in, and they're going to start smelting. And you can see immediately they start smelting. I have two different spots that I can put it. So I can put spread them out so they smelt a lot faster. Once this has been smelted down, you're going to see a number of iron generated right here. These are the numbers you need to pay attention to when you are working with what you want to make. So if I'm going to come over here and say I want to make buckshot, I need three lead and one clay. That's these numbers over here. So if I have, like, my forged iron, I'm going to need 12 iron and 6 clay. Again, that's these numbers on the right. So if I'm going to take clay and put it in there, a lot of people don't know you need clay, so I'm putting in three clay, but one clay chunk gives me five clay. So this is actually 15 clay worth. Uh, <clears throat> it's not exactly easy to describe. But then you can, then in turn, a lot of things take clay. By the way, you're going to need a lot of clay in your forge. So this forged iron takes six clay and 12 iron pieces. Now, now it should be noted that I can take my fire axe and hit scrap, and that comes over here. Now that's going to give me 150 pieces of iron. These individual pieces of iron, as you can see like this, are just one piece. So one one iron, one iron. goes right in. Uh, one for one trans uh, translation there. <coughs> but if I take my fire axe, this is 150 pieces. If I put the fire axe directly into the forge to be smelted, not up here for fuel. We don't want to burn it as fuel. We're going to leave it down here. You can see it's going to actually take longer to smelt. But instead of 150 pieces of iron, I'm going to get 200. Why is this important? 
it's harder to smelt these things down because they don't stack. See, I can just take 6,000 iron and just leave it in there all stacked up. So it is more time management. If you're out and about, you're searching for different loot, you're breaking everything down into iron because it's easier to carry because it's one thing to stack. That's only good if you're short on space. Otherwise, leave it intact because when you smelt it into your forge, you're actually going to get more iron total out of it. So you can see this whole thing's got to run before it'll run out. That's another kind of a downside to that. So I can take it out early. It doesn't get all the way smelted. Now, another thing to pay attention to is that there's some tools up here that you can work with. Um, and some of those you're going to need in order to craft specific items. So uh, the advanced bellows, that gives your forge smelting speed 50% uh, increase. So we're smelting our axe at 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Bellows go in 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So quite a significant uh, drop there, 50% um, faster. I guess it's not half the time, it's double or 50% faster. So um, you can also put in your anvil and your crucible. Those are multiple tools in the uh, forge. That also does forge crafting speed, the anvil does as well. Uh, the crucible is going to be able to make you, allow you to make steel items. So you can see here, like steel, well I guess I don't have the things unlocked, but the steel objects over here that, uh, that you want to make, you have to make using the crucibles. You're not able to make those things without a crucible in a forge. Um, you can see the steel is 30 iron and 15 clay. It's the same uh, kind of recipe as the forged iron, but it's steel so it takes more iron. That is how to construct, uh, use, find a forge. I hope this was helpful. I would make sure that you are always keeping your forge full of clay. Pretty much everything takes clay in order to be crafted. Um, otherwise, leave me a comment on any questions you might have that I didn't answer. And I hope you enjoyed the video.